Oh, Lord, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. The two witnesses <clears throat> is the first part of what I want to discuss with us in this chapter, in chapter 11. And that's the first thing I wanted to discuss with you. God, God has always had uh, his witnesses. Amen. He always have, even on this earth, as, as few there be that are willing to share the good news, even though that's what the church was established for on this earth. Just like Israel, Israel was supposed to uh, tell the world about the God of the universe and witness for him. They failed, okay? And uh, here comes the church. Church is supposed to uh, uh, share the, the, the good news of the gospel, the E, e it was an Eon Gileon, Eon Gileon, which is the good news. And that's what we, the body of Christ, is supposed to be doing even now. And I tell you, there's never been a time more serious <clears throat> that I know of. I'm going to put it like that. May have been back in days gone by, years gone by, may have been. But uh, it is serious right now that we need to be preparing people to leave this world. We need to be preparing them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because whether you are here when he comes or whether you're gone, hey, you need to know what's coming up. And the word tells us exactly what's going to be happening. I hope that uh, as many as can be will be saved and will be raptured out of here when the Lord comes back to the air to call his church home. But those that uh, are left here, hey, need to know, and, and you would think after the rapture that they would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but that those that are left here are still going to be struggling. <laughs> Satan is going to have them just as blind and believing a lie. Uh, unlike any other other time has ever been. But through it all, God has always had his witnesses. He has. He had them through Israel. He's had them through the church. Okay. Fickle and faulting and f failing. Though we may be, we are his witnesses. And even in this time of great witness, wickedness and absolute rebellion against God. He has his witnesses in this sin-cursed world. He does have. There's some folk who's still willing to tell this world about Jesus and about the goodness of God. The goal of this chapter, the goal of chapter 11 well, actually, the entire book of Revelation is to give glory to and to exalt the blessed name of our Savior, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is possibly, like I said earlier, the most difficult chapter in this entire revelation, in this entire, entire book, okay? Uh, this 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 fifteenth this fifteenth uh, chapter this eleventh chapter may be the most difficult because it's it, it's real it's very deep it it gets real deep I mean all the revelation is deep but it seems like this it goes even deeper <laughs> uh, yeah that we we could literally we could literally spend hours trying to explain all the twists and turns that are available here. Uh, however, we, we, we will try to get to the gist of, of what's important, passages uh, that's important and glean some truths from it. But uh, notice that the events described here probably, in all likelihood, takes place within the first three and a half years of the tribulation. Because you do know it's broken down in the 
two, three and a half year sections. First three and a half years, and then the second three and a half. And the second three and a half is to be worse than the first three and a half. That's why they call it the Great Tribulation. Antichrist has established worldwide peace, a world religion, uh, 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 a world economy, and uh, a, a seven-year contract with the nation of Israel. And notice the events of this, this awful period it, it described right here. Uh, in these first two verses of Revelation chapter 11 and verses 1 and 2 and we will see uh, the temple worship okay uh, yeah let me let me reference it back again I don't know if you're walking with me through the verses or just listening to me but in verses 1 and 2 it said that was giving me a read like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. Okay? Temple of God. Been various various references uh, uh, of, of very, there have been various uh, establishments by God that uh, reflect t the temple. Okay? But here, here we talk about the temple of worship, okay? And it says, uh, they call it the temple of God. And the altar said measure, and them that worship therein said measure it. Say, but the court, which is without it, without the uh, temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread under foot 40 and two months. Now remember the chapter we talked about on where God dealt, was dealing with the Gentiles and then he was dealing with the Jews, okay? There comes a time he's dealing with the Gentile. Remember Romans chapter... Uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, I believe it is, where it talks about God set the uh, Jews aside, grafted in the uh, Gentiles, and he's dealing with them. Well, that is specified in the book of Revelation, okay, and we've already talked about that. But look at the, the temple worship, okay? Men have been building uh, temples, for God and building places to worship God, sacrifices for God for many, many years, okay? Yeah, and uh, there have been many temples in the past built, okay? And uh, verse 3 uh, talks about this, okay, as well as verses 1 and 2, but it is talked about in the Word of God. Uh, number one, you remember Solomon's temple, okay, which was destroyed around 583 B.C. Then you uh, destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. I know some of y'all Sunday school people remember studying about that. And then you had uh, Zerubbabel's temple uh, destroyed around 186 B.C. by Antiochus. Antiochus, I think is how it's pronounced. And then you have the Epiphanes, Herod's temple, which is destroyed around 70 AD by Titus and the Romans. Okay? Now, the temple, the, the real temple, you know, uh, that God was leading up to, starting with Solomon's temple and Zerubbabel and uh, uh, Herod and on down there. The real temple that God wanted to get to and to uh, really uh, represent him was the temple, which is the church 
of believers. We are the temple of God. Hello, anybody out there this evening? <laughs> yeah, we are the body of Christ. We are the temple, okay? Um, the temple is the church of believers. Ephesians 2.21 and 1 Corinthians 6:19 okay you 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 remember you remember what the apostle Paul said about that when he said don't you realize that your body is the temple uh, your body is the temple of the holy spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God he said and you don't belong to yourself anymore <laughs> you are the temple that belong to God. That that's in uh, uh, Second Corinthians uh, six nineteen, or the first Corinthians. Maybe been First Corinthians. First Corinthians. That's right. First Corinthians six nineteen. Uh, there are two temples in the future. All right. There's two temples in the future. There's several temples in the past, but there's going to be some temples in the future. This is the millennial temple, Ezekiel uh, chapter 40 through 44, uh, chapter 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44 talks about this millennial temple and the tribulation temple. Okay, read, read it for yourself. I'm not going to read all four of those chapters uh, on our uh, broadcast this evening. But the Jews will rebuild the temple. They'll rebuild their temple. And matter of fact, they've already begun uh, the process that makes uh, makes this possible. And so as we study this passage, the two things we need to keep in mind that uh, we are really uh, talking about Jewish uh, we're on Jewish ground. We're talking about things pertaining to the Jewish population right now. And then secondly, uh, the, the, we, we, we're going to be talking about uh, or discussing a, a future temple, okay? Future temple. Uh, verse 2, uh, the city is mentioned. The holy city, Jerusalem, Okay? Yeah, yeah, and and I know that the Muslim and the Christian and the Jews have some real problems talking about that, but the Jews must return to their homeland, and you know that happened. Uh, some of y'all keep up with history. Uh, that happened uh, been a number of years ago, and and uh, in uh, 1960, or was it 1962? Mm. No, it wasn't 1948. That's when it was. I better get it right, because Dr. Stokes, oh, oh, Carrie got it. Hallelujah. Carrie got it right, 1948. That's exactly when it was. And so, but the temple must be rebuilt, okay? Uh, and uh, there are going to be difficulties involved getting to that point. But uh, the chronology of of the of these events is mentioned, okay, uh, in in uh, uh, several of the chapters here, Revelation, and the chronology is he says three and a half years, verses two and three, chapter twelve, verse six, verses twelve through fourteen. Let me, let me see if I, if I got those scriptures recorded <clears throat> so I can reference them right quick. Verse 12 and 6. Uh, no, it's going to be, it's going to take too much time for me to try to look them up and find them and make sure I give you the right thing. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought I could lay my hand right on the scripture. But, uh, well, I won't even try to do it. 
but look, uh, it's going to be three and a half years in the rebuilding of his temple. Uh, and that's what uh, verse 2 and verse 3 was talking about. And then you can look at uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 6, chapter 12, verse 14. That's chapter Revelation chapter 12, verse 6, and Revelation chapter 12, verse 14 gives uh, the uh, reference to the chronology, okay, of the building of this temple and uh, how it's going to be built in the amount of time that it's going to take to do it. Daniel's prophecy uh, had something to do with this temple rebuilding as well, okay? Okay. Uh, Daniel's prophecy also was concerning the Antichrist in, in, in uh, Daniel chapter 8, verse 10. And uh, he will allow the temple to be built. But after three and a half years, he will set himself up as God to be worshipped. Uh, I hope y'all are walking with me on this. Eh? Uh, you, you, know, you can't get in too big of a hurry because we're going to miss a lot of stuff anyhow. But we've got to, we've got to kind of take our time and walk through, walk through these things in Revelation and try to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to glean as much as we possibly can. You know, for some persons, it may be the first time they've ever been through the entire uh, Revelation. So, you know, uh, this thing may be really foreign to them. But then others who may have been, had some exposure to uh, the book, you know, may be familiar somewhat, but even that, okay, you have to be careful when you're going through. Uh, you have to really be depending upon the Holy Spirit to teach you, okay, what it is that God is trying to reveal to us uh, in this in this in this revelation. So, uh, this temple is under judgment from God. Okay, it, it, it is. Uh, the uh, chastisement mentioned, okay, in verses 1 and 2. But then uh, the temple is under judgment from God. Why? Because it rejects the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross and substitutes the, uh, uh, the sacrifices of men. Okay? Yeah, that's what it does. Uh, yeah, it, it substitutes the sacrifices of of of, of men. Uh, but verses three through twelve. Let me see. Let me go back. Maybe I missed something. Yeah, that I may want to share with you. Um, I, I said uh, the temple is under judgment because uh, they reject the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross and substitute the sacrifices of men as if they can do anything for us, okay? No, 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 no. No no bull, no goat, nothing. You dove, turtle dove, nothing that you sacrifice now will do us any good, okay? Uh, the sin debt has been paid and all the other stuff subsequent to that, uh, uh, after, doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's null and void. It's useless, but a part is given to the Gentiles, okay, as well as to the Jews, and we talked about that. They will be the instrument uh, of judgment, according to Luke 21 and 24. But look at uh, verses 12 through, 3 through 12, rather, and that's uh, the, two, the two witnesses. That's the two witnesses. Let me let me let me see. Well, we 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 have we have the two witnesses. We have the temple worship, verses one and two, but then we have the two witnesses, okay, and that's verses three to twelve. Verses three to twelve of the two witnesses. The church is gone. <laughs> okay. Y'all remember that? I told you the church is gone. Church is raptured up out of here. We're going home. Okay? 
We with the Lord. Well, we'll be at peace. <laughs> All our troubles will be over. But God still has his men, okay? He still got some men down here, okay? Remember, he's reverted back to the Jews, so he still got some men. He's still going to have some folk down here. Got special powers, though. Uh, and then verses 3 through 6 is the inauguration of their ministries. Are y'all are y'all paying attention to the scripture? If you ain't paying attention, I need to read them again. But I ask, I'll ask you to pay attention to verses uh, 3 through 6 here in the 11th chapter. Because this is the inauguration of uh, these two witnesses' ministry. Uh, verse 3, uh, they real people. Yes, they are. He said, and I will give power unto two, my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Okay, they real. They, they ain't, no, ain't no figment imagination here. These are real men who are witnessing for the master. So they're in sackcloth, meaning they're in mourning, okay? If they're in sackcloth, y'all know Old Testament sackcloth meant they were in mourning. Uh, they're preaching, uh, uh, preaching misery. <laughs> More misery, preaching misery. Uh, because at this point, you know, ain't nobody listening, just like ain't nobody listening now, you know? They've closed a deaf ear to God and to all that he is and uh, all of his sovereign power. They've closed a deaf ear and uh, don't hear nothing that they uh, hear. You know, I thought about something the other day. I think I may have mentioned it on Sunday in the message. And that is, you know, if you don't believe in the creationism, uh, of Almighty God, that God made male and female, all right? If you don't believe that, and if you don't believe God created, okay, and that man did not evolve, okay, and that has all kind of implications to it, if you don't believe that, if you don't believe the foundation of the creation of our existence, yeah, man, you're not going to believe anything else in the Bible. You're not going to believe anything else anybody tell you. If you think you can come up in here and determine what your sex is going to be, be it at birth or while you're living or any other time, if you think you can do that devoid of God's word that he made male, he made them male and female. That's what he did. God did that. Man can't make that. If you don't believe that, then, I mean, ain't, there's nothing else that you can say about your belief in the word because if you don't believe that, you don't believe nothing about God. <laughs> I don't want to go, to, I don't ran down a rabbit trail there. Let me get back on course. Verse 3 said, talks about Preaching, they'll preach, probably preach Jesus as the fulfillment of the Holy Scripture. You know, in the Old Testament, they uh, Jesus wasn't here bodily, but they they prophesied and preached that Jesus would come. Okay, and their faith was in the fact that he would come. Now, for us, he's already come. He's come, <laughs> amen. He, he, he's offered his life as a sacrifice for our sins, gone back to be with his father. We must believe that he has come, okay? But these, these preachers, these two witnesses right here are preaching Jesus as the fulfillment of Holy Scripture, 
that he is coming again. <laughs> okay? And it's going to be the second coming of Christ. He, oh, yeah, he's coming again. And this time, he's not going to be riding on a donkey. <laughs> he's going to be riding a white horse. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's not coming back, you know, the way he came the first time. It's going to be totally different. I'm not going to run down that trail either. But uh, uh, Jesus is going to be preached by these two witnesses as fulfillment of the scripture, ultimately. Verse 4 talks about the olive trees and the candlesticks, <coughs> referencing spirit and light, and they will minister in the power of God's spirit, preaching his light, his power. And you can find that in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 3. Zechariah 4, verse 3, and uh, verse 14. Let me see if I pull that up. Let me see if I pull that one up. I don't know if I got that one on here or not, but I, some of them I try to pull up and have them in advance so it doesn't take me so long. Okay, if I wanted to make reference to it. Uh, uh, what did I say? Zechariah 4 and 3. Uh, Zechariah 4 and 3. Okay, I can't seem to, once I get rolling here, it's hard for me to go back and pull up scripture uh, because my fingers don't work too good. In terms of turning pages, my fingers don't work. Uh, after that stroke, I can't, I can't do those kinds of things like y'all can do them anymore. Uh, no, I can't seem to put my hand on it. Zechariah 4 and 3 and 4, 14. No, I can't find it. I thought I had it out here. I couldn't. Well, I had uh, copied them down so I could have them. Yeah, but I can't see that. Oh, well, let me roll on. <laughs> let me roll on. Y'all can go pull that up for, at, at your the time of when it's convenient for you. <clears throat> but uh, they'll minister in the power of God's spirit, preaching his life. And that's Zechariah, verses 4 and 3 and verse 14. And they will be unstoppable. These witnesses will be, these two witnesses will be unstoppable. Uh, they have power. God has given them power to devour uh, their enemies. And they, can, they, they, they devour the enemies with fire. They have the power to shut up heaven and stop the rain. They have power to send plagues on the earth and turn water into wine. It's all right there in verse 5. Okay? You look at it, look at it for yourself. And, and uh, don't know exactly who these two witnesses are, but chances are, and those who have studied in-depthly and prolonged uh, 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 study of Scripture, uh, consider it to be Elijah these two witnesses, to be Elijah. Malachi 4 and 5 seems to reference it. Because remember, Elijah uh, never died. Okay? And those of you who know something about the Old Testament know that uh, Elijah took the chariot. <laughs> yeah, he did. That's where we get that song, Low Down the Chariot. <laughs> And let me ride. <laughs> That's where that song came from. 
<laughs> the chariot came down and Elijah got aboard and went on back. Elijah never died as we would consider dying in the physical. He didn't do that. And uh, there are those who surmise that uh, these two witnesses, one of which is Elijah, and we see Elijah's uh, power here. Uh, and that uh, secondly, it was uh, Moses who also, uh, uh, as, as far as we know, um, was seen with Elijah on, on Matthew, in Matthew chapter 17 on Mount of Transfiguration. Moses, well, we surmise that Moses died, but nobody know where his, his grave is. <laughs> nobody knows where his grave is, okay? <clears throat> and, and if he did die, uh, it was said that God buried him, okay? But they were two special vessels upon this earth. And then in Matthew chapter 17, on the Mount of Transfiguration, they showed up, all right? They showed up up there with Jesus. You remember, you remember when the, when uh, Jesus' garment was made so white? They said no soap pile on the earth could make it that white. <laughs> yeah, there was a special, special uh, a gathering up there on the Mount of Tra Transfiguration. That's where... Peter, Peter was with them fellas up there. And Peter said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Yeah, anywhere Jesus is, it's good to be there. <laughs> but the miracles and plagues were performed as it's understood by these two uh, witnesses, by Moses and Elijah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, there, there's another, another, another verse uh, that um, about Enoch. There's some, 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 some reference about Enoch, but I won't even go into that. It gets kind of involved, and I won't do that. But it doesn't really matter uh, about who they are. I really, tell you the truth. But what matters is that God has always. Uh, had witnesses, and he still got witnesses here during this a time of tribulation. He's going to have a couple of special witnesses after the church has gone home, okay? God had a witness back there when, uh, when, when the Bible said the imaginations of man's heart was evil continually. You know, every, every thought of his heart was wicked. Okay, but even during that time, amen, God had Noah, okay? Noah came forth and preached the gospel, preached the word for 120 years, all right? And so, uh, verses 7 through 10 gives a completion uh, of these two witnesses' ministry, verses 7 through 10. It is a completion of their ministry. Uh, verse 7, they are killed by the beast. These two witnesses are killed by the beast. By the beast. But in Revelation 13, 1, if you ain't God's will, uh, you know, we understand nothing can happen to you or nothing can harm you until God is done with you. So obviously, when the beast kills them, God has finished, okay, using them as with the witness. When when the church is raptured, that means God is through uh, uh, trying to convert this wicked generation, okay, and convince them that uh, he came to um, give his life that they might live. Verse 8 talks about their bodies lying uh, in the street, unburied, 
in the street for three and three and a half days in the city of uh, vice, vanity, violence, okay, in Jerusalem, okay. You know, this may sound a little far-fetched to you all, but uh, right now, God forbid that if somebody uh, attack you or try to do something to harm you in the street, you know, folk won't lift their hand to help you. They'll walk around you. <laughs> I, uh, I've seen it primarily uh, uh, on TV. I ain't seen it in person. I might be, i be honest. I haven't seen it in person. But it appears that when you get hurt, and and uh, and I've heard stories told about it as well, that people will just walk around you, ignore you. Uh, I, I don't want to get involved. That That's the word they use. I don't want to get involved. And so they, hands off. Uh, three and a half days, these two witnesses lie in the street where there's nothing but vanity and violence and all kind of stuff going on, okay? But uh, nobody does anything about it. They just lay there in the street. For three and a half years, three and a half days. But then in verse nine, uh, it it seems as if uh, let, let me let me let me let me let me read that verse. Let me read that verse. I'm, I'm gonna get about and read this verse. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this. One. Oh, okay, she done turn my page right there too. <laughs> okay, let me see. If I can put my hand on this one right quick. Verse 9 of uh, Revelation uh, 11. Uh, come on, Lord, help me, please. Mm. It's so hard to get my fingers to working. Because they, they, they ain't got no, seem like got no feeling in them no more. So I don't know what it is. Maybe some of y'all understand what I'm talking about. Uh, I got it. I just need to flip one more page, and then I think I'll have it. Okay, here we go. Well, it's 11 9. Okay, let's see. 11 9 said, uh, and they of the and they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see, listen, listen, shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now, you know, this is some wicked stuff going on during this time to have them lying there in the street publicly for three and a half days, going to be dead. And the powers that be, whatever whatever force, will not allow them to be buried. Okay? All right. And, 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 th and this feeds, you know, th this, this, this kind of violence that's going on right now, the kind of vanity that's going on right now kind of vices going on in there, it, that, that's exactly what it feeds in this day of wickedness. Verse 10 says the earth dwellers, earth dwellers, it won't be us, y'all, the earth dwellers will throw a party. Listen, 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 listen. God help these folk to understand what's going on. The earth dwellers will throw a party. The devils, okay, will have a ball. Why? Because they're preaching trouble to sinners. The preaching of the word uh, really convicted them. That, you know, there comes a time when they're going to stop up their ears because they don't want to hear the word of God. Read Romans chapter 1 again. 
Hey, you ought to read that every at least once a month. <laughs> you ought to read Romans chapter 1. See the kind of people that's in this world and what's going on right now. Okay? The preaching of these two witnesses troubled the sinners. The preaching of the word uh, was tormenting to them. And, uh, you know, the word's got power, y'all. Come on, walk with me. The word's got power. The word will do something if you preach the word, okay? I know what kind of preaching is going on nowadays. is just preachers trying to tickle the ears and, you know, uh, 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 trying to uh, appease the, uh, the desire and the fantasies of what folk want to hear. But listen, if you preach the word, the word will bring about conviction, okay? Always see nobody walking the aisle. But the word will do what God said his word will do. Just preach the word. That's what Paul told Timothy. Preach the word. Don't preach your opinion. Don't preach what nobody. Preach the word of God. And the word of God will bring about conviction. Uh, it bugs people when they hear the word. <laughs> they don't worry about caring about your your opinion, your evaluations, uh, your thoughts on it, but preach the word. And, and people don't, do not like to be faced with their sin. They don't want to hear about, uh, they don't want, not only do they not want to be, uh, not, not only do they not want to hear about sin, they don't want to hear about their sin, okay? Not even, you can preach it in general. You can preach it specific. Anything that's doing with the, uh, the, the, the kind of lifestyle that's out of step with God's word and what God, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it, okay? People hate to hear the word. They will uh, definitely hate it. Just like they hate it now, they'll hate it then. Okay, these two witnesses uh, will have a hard time. Verse 11 and 12 talks about the vindication of their ministry. We, we just finished talking about the, um, the uh, what we talk about. We were talking about the, the, uh, the um, their, their witnessing. And uh, the uh, validation, that's what it was, the validation of their ministry. Uh, but now we want to talk about the vindication of their ministry, the inauguration of their ministry. We talked about that. And uh, now we're going to talk about the vindication of their ministry. They are raised from the dead, even though they've been killed. Watch the word. Verse 11 and 12, they are raised from the dead. God then reacts, reenacts the rapture. He reenacts the rapture. How does he do that? He shows a godly world what they missed. I said godly, didn't I? I meant to say godless world. He shows a godless world what they missed. Okay. And, and God will vindicate his people, okay? Uh, he'll vindicate his two witnesses, all right? Because he's going to raise them from the dead. But then verses 13 and 14, we see a terrible woe, okay? We see a terrible woe. Uh, my my, uh, my uh, confidant tells me that my time is up, but let me see if I can cover these Last two verses before we finish up this evening. Uh, we see a terrible war. Uh, earthquake, verses 13 and 14, talks about an earthquake. And look what this earthquake does. Now, you know, you know that's what uh, Jesus talked about, I think, in Matthew and Mark, rather, chapter 13, when they, and when the, those disciples asked him the question, when should he be? When, when shall, uh, how shall we know when you come? And, and Jesus talked about the earthquake and dives. Well, listen. 
earthquake uh, is where 10 parts, the 10th part of Jerusalem falls. Verses 13, 14. A 10th part of Jerusalem falls. Then we see 7,000 noble men, notable men die. And you know what said the number seven represents, the number of perfection. God shows who is still in control. He takes out 7,000 of them one time. Remember when he said, when Elijah said, hey, I'm the only one to serve me, and, and God told Elijah, listen, man, I got 7,000 men ain't bound to need a bell. The remnant must admit that this is the work of God, okay? That this is the work of God. And 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 Antichrist won't like this too well. All right. And and um the some maybe try to respond uh to 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 the preaching. But remember, if anyone responds to the preaching of the gospel during this time, uh they can can be converted. But remember, they lose their head instantly. Not lose it in terms of mental faculty. I'm talking about literally lose their head. Antichrist, they'll be beheaded. Second war is past, but a worst is on the way. Okay? A worst one is on the way, and that's going to be Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. Uh, which is uh, uh, the edge at the edge of eternity, okay? Now, I talked to you about uh, uh, the uh, last things. I talked to you about eschatology and about time, okay, and about the events of eternity, you know. Uh, and I know for many years we've understood, we thought we understood what it was going to be like at the close of the age, and that we were going to instantly go into eternity, and, you know, and uh, things are going to tra uh, be translated. Well, we will be translated, but uh, the things are going to continue on this earth as far as time is concerned. But eternity is going to be a process, and there are going to be a number of ages and stages, even as we go into eternity. So... Uh, I've talked about that. We'll talk about it at a later date. But uh, we're going to see the edge of eternity as we start in Revelation chapter 11, verses uh, 15 through 19. We'll talk about that next time, okay? We're going to talk about the announcement of the reign of Christ, and we're going to talk about uh, more about uh, this 11th chapter, which can be a bit in-depth complicated, but if you stick with, it, stick with me, I think we'll all benefit and be blessed from it, all right? Uh, if there's anyone that desires to uh, come over on the Lord's side and to receive him as your Savior, uh, Romans 10, 9, 10 uh, tells us that you got to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. For God gives anyone the desire to be saved the power to become a son of God. You escape all of this stuff that I'm talking about. But if you fail to do it, you're going to be caught right up in the middle of it, and uh, no telling, uh, no telling what you're going to have to experience. So uh, I encourage you to get right with the Lord before the Lord returns or before he calls you into eternity.